a copyrighted program transcribed and dedicated to the prevention of crime. Calling all cars, attention all cars, broadcast 29, a murder, suspects unknown. That is all, Gordon. of fingerprinting in police work, various forms of identification were used. We read of the branding of criminals and slaves at a time when no other method of identification was known. Early in the 18th century, the better organized police departments of Europe employed men with good visual memories to mentally record the faces of criminals and the crimes committed by them. Today, your departments are applying modern methods to police procedure in endeavoring to give the citizens of your community the maximum protection to lives and property. And now, a true story taken from the files of law enforcement agencies. The murder of a soul. Wine under the cellar. Oh, you love your brother, eh, Gatano? Oh, he's a one fine guy, my brother Vincenzo. You know, uh... <laughs> oh, but I forget you. You never see him, huh, Maria? No, he's my cousin, but I never meet him. He was not born when I lived the old country. Yes, that's right. But you like him, Maria. He's a one to find a good looking fellow. Good looking? Yes. Bueno. I make especially good spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know what I'd do without you, Maria. Here I am, all alone in this country with my good Rosa so far away in Italy. Oh, if I know I have you, my little cousin, to keep the house for me, I, <laughs> I'd not be so happy. Well, if you had not taken me in when Giuseppe dies, the children and I would be... I don't know where we will oh. be. <laughs> now, look, and now, now, when Vincenzo gets here, us are going to behave in a bed. We'll be a happy family, big happy family. Here, here, here she is, Vincenzo. Here's Maria. Your cousin. Uh, hello, Maria. <laughs> it's very funny to meet your cousin after you've already grown up. Oh, it's sometimes very nice. 
I'm a glad to know you, Cousin Vincenzo. And I'm a glad to meet you, Cousin Maria. Yes, yes. Well, look, well, come on, come on. Let's sit down and eat. Ah, minister. I made it myself, Vincenzo. Then it will taste all of the best. It's <laughs> a glass of wine, Vincenzo. Come, Maria. Let's drink it to your cousin. To Vincenzo. Ah, salute, Vincenzo. <sighs> Did you just come from the old country? Me? No, no. I've been in California a long time, in the north, in the wine country. Oh, sure, Maria, don't you know that? Why, Vincenzo is married to a swell of bambino, eh, Vince? Oh, married? Not anymore. Oh. What? No, we split up. We get a divorce. Six months more, and I'm all through with it. She was a no good. Oh, she was a nice, good looking, though, eh, Vince? Sure, out the side, she was okay. But inside, no good. So, that's all over, huh? See, si, see. Si. I'm coming down here to start something new, a little business. Oh, that's good. I could help you get a start. Good. And then I get myself a little house, and then maybe I have Maria come and be my house again. Oh, no, no. Oh, no. She stays with me until my rose comes from the old country, you know. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh but Maria, she's a cook of good spaghetti. I think I want it for my own. <laughs> so nice up here on the hill, with the whole city below, Vincenzo. The lights are like a jewels in the necklace of the Madonna. Yes, a pretty swell. Oh, I like to be with you, Vincenzo. You've been nicer to me. It's a new and strange. No one ever been nicer to me in the same way. Even the death, before he died, it was different with him. I like you, Marie. You are all right again. Oh, I may not be much to look at anymore. Well, you're swell enough. Oh, no, I'm not, Vincenzo. I'm getting old. Nearly 29. I was a beautiful one before the babies come. And you still are. Inside, Vincenzo. Inside of me is love. Love that all my life was waiting for something. Now I know it wasn't for you it was waiting. Claro. You say that, that your wife is beautiful outside, but bad inside. Vincenzo, even if I'm not so good outside, I am a good inside, in my heart. Yes, Maria. Uh, Vincenzo, uh, did you know that Catano's wife, that Rosa, she comes from the old country this week? She does? Yeah. Then you can come to me. Then you can come and be my house. Do you want me? Want you, of course I do. Will you come with me? Oh, yes, Vincenzo. I will come. And so, Marie, her heart overflowing with love, goes to keep house for young Vincenzo, to await the moment of his freedom from his first wife so that she may become his second. The weeks go by, happy, joy-filled weeks for the lonely Marie Trentini. Then at last comes the day when Vincenzo receives his final divorce papers. Jubilant, he leaves the house. Leaves Marie, goes out to celebrate. Faithfully, Marie waits up for him, waits through the long evening, through the still night for the return of her man. Is that you, Vincenzo? Yes, it was. Hey, what do you do up? You ought to be in a bed. I was awake for you, Vincenzo. Well, I'm here. So you go to bed. Oh, did you have a good time? Sure, I have a good time. Oh, is it nice to be free again? Nice, it's a swell. Free, I kind of believe it. It's like I get out of a prison. <laughs> you should see the dinner they give me at Luigi. Oh, what a party. And they've got a couple of new girls down there. Santa Maria, what a beauty. Oh, but Vincenzo, you... Uh, uh, there was a one. Little Amelia, just the 17. Huh? And what a figure. Luck of this. <laughs> she liked me. Tomorrow night she'll oh. come up for supper. I want you to cook up something special. And... Mm-hmm. Hey, what's the matter? What are you crying for? Nothing. Nothing. Only I thought that you and Hey, I... hey, what do you get at? What's this? You begin to make a noise like a wife. A wife? Yes, Vincenzo. I guess that's what I told you say. Oh, Vincenzo, don't you see? I love you. And I thought that Oh, maybe... mother of the meal. You thought I was going to marry you, eh? <laughs> you must have been crazy. No, I ain't going to marry you, no one. Me? <laughs> I'm going to have a good time for the rest of my life. <laughs> Mm, 
Gaetano, wake up. Come on, wake up, Gaetano. Uh, what's the matter? There's a somebody knock on the door. Uh, Get up and see who it is. Somebody knock on the door? What time is it? It's 3.30. 3.30? Who, who is it this time of the night? Well, you better go and see. Okay, okay. Where do I get my pants on? There. I got a nerve after 12 o'clock to knock on the Okay, I'm coming here. Maria, the bambini. What are you doing here? Something wrong with Vincenzo. What's the matter? Cousin Gaetano, can we come back? Can I come and live with you again? Well, sure, sure. Come on in. Come on, all of you. Come on. Uh, now, now, tell me, what's the matter? I want to live with Vincenzo any longer. I, I hate him. Oh, no, I don't. Why? What did he do to you? Oh, nothing, I guess. Only I gave him everything of value I have in the world. And he don't even know it. No, no, you better go to bed, Maria. I don't know what you're talking about, and I don't think you'll do it. You go to bed, now, and we'll talk about it in the morning. Well, but you must listen, Gaetano. Huh? I love him. I love him like I never loved you, sir. Like I never can love another man. Yes, but does he love you? He did, Gaetano. He did at first. When we first meet here, he loved me. He loved me when I went to him to be his housekeeper. I thought it would never end, Gaetano. And then, tonight, he come back drunk. He boasts of some girl. He ordered me to cook a dinner for them. Well, you is a housekeeper, ain't you? Oh, Gaetano, don't you understand? I love him. Gaetano, you are his brother. You're older than him. You talk to him, huh? What should I say to oh, him? Oh, you must make him marry me. I love him, Gaetano. Hmm? Make him marry you? <laughs> you, Maria. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Oh, boy, Vincenzo is a young fellow. Good looking. He could get any pretty bambino he wants. Why should he marry you? I love him, Gaetano. Yeah, but look at you. Look on yourself under the mirror. You get it to be old, Maria. You're fat. I was a pretty one. But you ain't anymore. Why should Vincenzo want you when he could get any girl he looks at? I love him, Gaetano. It's not fair. He made me love him. you got to make him marry me, Gaetano. Uh, well, I won't. He'd be a big fool to marry you. Gaetano! Oh, well, now, listen, Maria. Now, look. If you want to get married, that's okay. Look, look. i got a friend. You know? He's a fine fellow. He's come over from Italy. He's got a one of Bambino of his own. And he will be the poor wife should die. You marry him, Maria. Marry somebody I don't know, I don't love. What do you think I am? You think I'm for anybody? I'm for Vincenzo. I belong to Vincenzo. <laughs> you, Maria. <laughs> oh, it's oh, a good joke. <laughs> that's very funny. <laughs> Caetano, you're going to be sorry. You see, you don't know how sorry you are. <laughs> <see? laughs> For weeks, this cross Marie Trentini broods over the fickleness of Vincenzo and the brutal frankness of Gaetano. For weeks, behind her impassive, saddened face, her brain is in a turmoil, trying to adjust herself to the wrong she feels has been done her. And then finally on August 7th, as Marie lies tossing sleeplessly in her bed, something in her brain snaps. The turmoil of thought and counterthought lines up into one straight, clear path of action. Marie slips from her bed, tiptoes into the front room, takes Gaetano's shotgun from the closet, and silently walks toward the bedroom in which her cousin and his wife are sleeping. I love him, Gaetano. You could make him marry me. I would make him a good wife. You could have done this for me. But you wouldn't, Gaetano. You laughed at me. And you told me I was old and fat. But I had a soul. I had feelings. You don't know about that. You don't know that you have killed me. You have killed my soul. But see, Gaetano. My body is not yet dead. My body can still kill you, Gaetano. Yes. You kill my soul. I kill your body. You see how my body still lives, cousin Gaetano. 
How it lifts his gun to my shoulder. How it puts my finger on the trigger. How it... Coming to police. Yes, yeah, Professor, they make a time. You, you think maybe so he might arrest somebody? Yeah, they arrest you, Charlie. You get in the way. Oh, I go. I go. All right, where's the trouble? Right in here. It's a murder. Okay, come on. Stand back there. Come on, boy. Hey, uh, I'm going to show you the way, huh? I can find it all right. Bodies. In the here, in the bedroom. Mm. Well, um. he's dead all right. Buckshot. Um. Hey, but this woman is still alive. Hickey. Yes, yeah, Frank. Call the ambulance. This woman is still breathing. Okay. Now, anyone here know anything about this? Sure. sure. All right. All right. All right. Now, don't all talk at once. Who lives here? I live here. What's your name? Mary Trantini. Who is this man here? He's my cousin. Gaetano Cantini. I live with him and his wife, Rosa. Is this his wife who's wounded here? Yes. Well, what do you know about it? A few minutes ago, I wake and see a man standing over my bed. He had a flashlight and he say, keep quiet. And I say, what are you doing here? And he say, you too pretty to kill. You be quiet and no harm come to you. He think I'm pretty. All right, all right. I got that part. Now go ahead. While he stood by the door of my room, three other men go into the middle room and pull things out of the dresser. And then I hear a gun go off. And the man run out. And I go into Gaetano's room. And I find this. Oh. Hey, get us some water, somebody. Yeah, hey, I'm going to get it. Right well, this is what he was killed with, Frank. Well, 12-gauge shotgun. <laughs> Both shells discharged. Whose gun is this, Marie? Gaetano's. Long time ago, four men come see my cousin. Two Japanese. Two Americans. They say, guys, steal it from them. Gaetano, he say No. An American say, you bring back stuff by tomorrow night or we kill you. I think these same people coming here tonight. Same voice. I think they're a murder guy. Okay, we'll run there down. Hickey? That's right. Call the photographer and have him take two or three shots of the body and then call the wagon and take it to the morgue. Uh, Corsini? Yes, sir? Now, you speak Italian. Get these people out of here and tell them if anyone touches anything in this house, he'll be tried for murder. <laughs> Barlow, the fingerprint expert, goes over the murder house for prints while other officers round up the American and Japanese accused by Marie. Condaffer and Corsini discuss the crime as they wait the arrival of the suspect. Well, Corsini, what does it look like to you? The story sounds straight enough. You know how these racket murders go. Somebody hijacks somebody else, and they say they find a body along a lonely road. Yeah, that's true enough. Now, look here, Corsini. You understand these Italians a lot better than I do. Do you think Marie is telling us everything? Well, as a matter of fact, I had the feeling that she was holding something back. They're funny people, my countrymen. They suspect everyone but their own kind. Yeah, that's what I figured. Now, I want you to talk to her. Maybe you can get more out of her than any of the rest of us. Well, I won't promise anything, but I'll try. I got these suspects outside, Frank. Bring them in. Okay. Come on, you guys. All right, don't stop. You men know Guy Trentini? Yeah, we know him. Did you know he was murdered tonight? What? Who? Oh, how come... He's been a murder to please. That's what we want to find out from you. Oh, come on, telling you nothing. We know nothing about a murder. Where were you guys tonight? We were down at Blackie's joint. We can prove it. Oh, yes, sir. Very easy proof. When did you see Guy Trentini last? Oh, a long time ago. Last uh, March, I think. What did you go to see him about? Uh, we thought he'd hijack some stuff from Togo here. Didn't you threaten to kill him then? No. Found out that he hadn't done it, so we left him alone. We ain't seen him since. Bring in the Trentini woman. Okay. Come in, please. Now, Marie, are any of these men the ones you saw in your house tonight? I don't know for sure. The man, he held a flashlight in my face. I couldn't see what he looked like. Hey, what did I tell you, Captain? We weren't there. But his voice, that sounded like the same one. Well, excuse me, sir. Lady is mistaken. You will find we were at the Brackey. Well, that isn't a very good identification, Marie. Now, aren't you any more sure than that? No. As I say, I couldn't see his face. The flashlight blinded me. Okay, Hickey, take these men over to Barlow's office and have them fingerprinted. Oh, now look here, Captain. You ain't got anything on us. What's the idea of fingerprints? Just for elimination. If you're innocent, naturally, we don't want to hold you any longer than is necessary. The suspected American and Japanese are fingerprinted. And Barlow works over their prints and the prints found at the scene of the crime. 
After several hours, he reports to acting Captain Condesser. Well, Barlow, no similarity in the prints at all. Not the slightest. Not the slightest. I don't believe these men had anything to do with the crime. Well, we better hold them anyway until we're sure. And then you and I can go out there right away and scare up some more things. Now, according to Marie, these men came in through this rare screen door here. Did you examine it? Yes, I already have. But, well, I'll do it over again. Uh, hey, Frank, did she tell you the men broke in here? Why, oh, sure. You can see where they pushed in the screen to get at the hook. Yeah? Well, this screen was ripped open from the inside. What's that? Sure. Look here. Look through this magnifying glass. Well, I'll be just... The wires have been toward the outside, see? If the screen had been pushed in... They'd bend toward the inside. Yes, you're right. So the screen was pushed out from inside, and then the flap bent in to look like an outside job. Yeah, and whoever did it was in the house and wanted to make it look as if the house was entered. That's what I'd say. By the way, who was in the house? Why, Marie Trentini, but Howard, she wouldn't have... How can you tell? Where is she now? A couple of doors down the street, staying with some friends. Okay, come on. We're going to fingerprint her, just for elimination, of course. Marie Trentini is fingerprinted, and Barlow retires to his office to compare her prints with those on the murder weapon. It does not take him long to realize that the prints are identical, and with this positive identification, Condafford dispatches Lieutenant Corsini to arrest the Italian woman for murder. Corsini, wise in the psychology of his countrymen, goes about making the arrest in his own fashion. Hello, Marie. How are you today? Oh, I'm all right, I guess. Anything troubling you? You look all upset. No, nothing. Nothing is the matter except... Oh, Corsini, you're going to think how I feel with my cousin getting killed like that. Yeah, of course. And poor Rosa. How is she, Corsini? Have you heard from the hospital? She's better. She can get well, all right. Buckshot just wounded her on the head. Madre de Dio. My cousin and his wife. I love them very much, Corsini. Yes, that's what I thought. That's why I've been wondering about something. Huh? Wondering about something? What? I want to ask you a question, Marie. Yes? How does it happen that your fingerprints appear on the shotgun that was used to kill your cousin? My fingerprint? Yeah. Oh, well, uh, well, I explain that. I wish you would. It's easy to explain. Uh, just after it, it happened, I, I scream. Uh, the neighbors are coming. I pick up the gun. I, I show how Guy Tano get the kill. Show me, will you, Marie? Show me how you picked up the gun. Here, take this broom. Now, pretend it's the gun and pick it up the same way you picked up the gun. Well, I... I picked up like that. Yeah, but, Marie, your fingerprints are on the stock of the gun and on the trigger. Now, look... As if you held it like this. <gasps> oh, now, now, Marie, you try to calm yourself. I'm just asking you questions so I can get to the bottom of this thing. I, I'm not accusing you. If you didn't do it, you've got nothing to worry about. All right. Come on, Marie. Put on your hat and let's go to the station so you can tell the captain your story. All right. You get them, I steal them. They play in the yard. You put them into the car. I want to wash them my face first. Okay, but Hurry. Hey, Tony, come on, get your sister. We're going for a ride. Where are we going, Corsini? Down to the police station for a while. We're going to ride in the police car? Yep. Gee, let's go. Just as soon as your mother comes out. Oh, will you blow the siren all the way? Sure. And can we listen to the police radio? Yep. Gee, that'll be swell. Hey, will you go down the street this way so all the kids can see me? Yes, now? yes, I guess so. wonder what's keeping your mother, Tony. Yes, I better go see. Uh, I'll come along with you. All right. Marie. Marie. Yeah, that's funny. Where's the bathroom, Tony? Oh, that's over there. Good Lord. Mama! Mama! She cut her throat. Fifteen minutes later, Marie Trentini is in the Georgia Street Receiving Hospital, and doctors are working feverishly to close the wicked wound she has inflicted on herself with a razor. As soon as they have finished their work, Corsini and Condaffer are admitted to her room. Marie. Marie, why did you do this? It was better that way. I killed Gaetano. I want to die now. But why did you kill him, Marie? He no let me marry his brother, Vincenzo. I beg of Vincenzo, marry me. But he says no. So I go to Gaetano. I tell him he must make his brother marry me. And Gaetano, he laughs and say, I'm not good enough for Vincenzo. 
I gave up in Genzio to my soul. And as they laughed, I ran off. He could have made him marry me. But he laughed. So I killed him. Did you intend to kill Rosa too? No. That was an accident. Rosa, she a good woman. She's innocent. But why did you cut your throat? It wasn't the best thing to do. My fingers on the gun. Everybody know I killed a Gaetano. Well, then, why did you try to throw the blame on those four men who came to see Guy last spring? I am ashamed about that. I did not want to tell that I did it because of my bad feelings. They need me. But I guess maybe Rosa cares for them all right. <sighs> Only Cosini. Yes. There is a one thing I want you to do for me. Do for you? Well, uh, what's that, Marie? I want you kill Vincenzo Trentini for me. Kill him for me. Kelo, Kelo, me atradito. In just a moment, you will hear what happened to Marie Trentini. dramatization as Marie Trentini was delirious for five days and showed no desire to get better. She had said that her soul had been killed. She apparently did not care for her body to live. In the middle of the night on August 12th, she died in her sleep. From the point of police procedure, the department did its work in eliminating falsely accused persons and, by means of fingerprints, discovered the actual criminal and obtained a confession. Whether Marie was doubly guilty in taking her own life after taking that of another is a problem for a higher judge than there is on earth to decide. Nevertheless, it proves that crime does not pay. Calling all cars, attention all cars. Cancellation broadcast 29. Suspect has committed suicide. That is all. <laughs>